Hi folks, some time ago Tobias, uh, Knife Chats with Tobias, did a video on mil military clasp knives, particularly British ones. And he talked about a lot about um, British Army clasp knives and uh, he mentioned in there that the British Navy used them as well. And I purely, you know, I'm not having, I wasn't having a go or anything. I just said, no, actually, the British Navy didn't use those pattern. They used a different pattern. They used this pattern from 1938 right up into uh, the mid 80s. I couldn't say exactly when. I know they were. They'd stopped using them by 19 by uh, 1988. Uh, I said that, and he put up a correction, and I think he was grateful for the uh, information. Um, but anyway, I was in I was in Peebles uh, a few months ago, and I saw one of these for sale in a shop called Clantiques on the on the high street in Peebles. Um, I thought I know somebody that would appreciate that, so I picked it up, and I got his address and I sent it off to him in America, and he was very grateful and he's done a little video on it, and it's 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 not just add, um, completes a spot in his collection, but it's also filled in that sort of that blank of knowledge so anyway i sent him that now tobias is, is um is a very nice guy very generous chap so he sent me something in return and we've been talking about um he'd been talking about this particular knife of which he had a couple of examples there's a um it's a, it's available in the smooth bone it's also available in the saw cut bone and he had examples of both and um, it's called a dog bone jack. Obviously, there's a dog bone on it. The the shape of the frame, I don't know if you can really see that, but the the bolsters are sort of swollen so that it has a kind of dog bone shape to it as well. And it comes with a dog whistle attached, um, an audible dog whistle, so that you don't damage your dog's hearing. You can actually hear what it's saying. Um, now, it's a rough rider knife. It's not a hugely expensive knife, but it actually is quite a nice example. And funnily enough, he got one. He, he bought one for me and it arrived. And um, um, the colouring and the, the bone wasn't very nice, so he sent it back. So, you know, I, if I'd ordered it from America myself and it had arrived and it had been not right, would it be, I wouldn't have sent it back because, you know, there's no point. But he being in Chicago could send it back to Smoky Mountain Knife Works. It's quite round, it kind of rolls out my hand a bit too easily. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's got two blades, a large spear point with a uh, dog bone jack written on it, and a picture of a dog in the middle, which is nice. It's got the Rough Rider horseshoe on the uh, Rakata. Then, at the other end, and I have to actually whisper this very carefully, because my dogs are listening. It's got a spay blade. Um, I thought it was a pen, a pen blade at first, but it's not, it's a, it's a spay. Um, with the match strike nail neck, the, the other blade had the long pull uh, match strike instead of a nail neck, which is, which is really nice. I mean, it's a really nice knife. I know um, Rough Riders are often maligned for being cheap and Chinese made. Well, they are Chinese made and they are inexpensive, but they're anything but cheap. These are, you know, these are nice knives. Okay, they're 440A steel, but you know, I was carrying knives for years and years and years before it would have ever dawned on me that anything, that any particular steel was any, any better than any other. If it said stainless steel on it, I was happy. So that's, um, that's fine. Now, that was that was great. I would have been more than happy if he would sent me that. In fact, I was more than happy that he'd sent me that. I didn't expect anything else. But when the box arrived, it seemed a bit heavy. And the reason it was a bit heavy was because it also contained a Rough Raider Barlow. Now, um, Tobias is aware, as anybody that's ever watched this channel will be aware, that I quite like Barlow knives. In fact, my very favourite two knives are my uh, Taylor's Eyewitness uh, Sheffield Barlows. I have a few other Barlows. 
piece. Uh, Michael May. Boca. Etc. Um, so he threw one of these in again. Again, it's a rough road. Again, it's an inexpensive knife, but it's a nice knife. It's a good size. It's very similar in size to the Case Barlow. A bit smaller than the Sheffield made Barlows. Certainly smaller than this behemoth from um, Michael May. Which is a great knife. We'll be doing a video on that shortly. And but it's bigger than say the little um, Boca, which is really quite a little baby um, baby knife nice knife but a baby so anyway uh, until recently I'd never owned a two blade Barlow and I bought this uh, case one that's a two blade Barlow and this one arrived as a two blade Barlow the main blade being a nice spear point with a match strike nail neck and the secondary is a pen blade again with the uh, match strike um, nail nick. Now they have a nice bit of walk and talk to them. I don't think they're the most amazing knives in the world, uh, but you know, for ten dollars, what do you expect? No half stop, but I don't like half stops. Nice wee uh, click to it when it closes. So, you know, uh, very functional, very nice little knives. And for the money, absolutely outstanding. I mean, really. Uh, for $10, now granted in the UK, it probably is about 15 quid, which is pretty much $20. But that's, that's what we have to live with and contend with every day in the UK. It's just what it is. Now, so there we are. There's two... Nice knives that I was very happy to. I, you know, I was over the moon that he sent me one, that he sent me two, it was amazing. But he also sent me, and this is um, really great actually, because this is something I could go on to Heine Haynes or somewhere and I could probably order that one. I don't know if I can order the dog, but I might have been able to. If I pestered them, they probably would get it. But I can't just buy one of these. This is a bit like my walking along and happening to see one of these for sale in a in a, an antique shop you don't get you, you can't just order one of these this knife was made in the 60s i think it's not the best quality of knife in the world these were cheap so y y they're going to be hard to find by and and these were inexpensive these were cheap and the, what I say, what, the reason I say that is the things like the bolsters, the hollow bolsters that are just clipped onto a frame. The um, fit and finish is pure out of the factory. Just, you know, stamp it out, clip it together, stick it in a box, send it out. Um, but these were a working man's knife to use. And you'll see on there, there was an electrician would be who would want it, the electric mate. A lot of these knives were very, very common. They were made on um, an ordinary jackknife frame and they were sold and lots and lots of people used them as, as tradesmen's knives. But, you know, they just don't make this anymore. This is something that you have to look for to find. And it has so much more interest in it than just how good a quality or not the fit and finish is. This is something which is a piece of history that actually tells you something about the way things were, the way knives were, uh, what people carried, what was of interest to them, what was important to them. And nowadays we ponce around worrying about whether we have the most perfect fit and finish or whether we've got some lovely file work on the back or whether we've got the best desert iron wood or mother or whatever. This tells us about what was important to a chap putting a knife in his pocket who was going out to work. So this knife has a good broad um, uh, ram's foot blade. Ram's foot meaning it gets broader from the ricasso out towards the point, um, where the sheep's foot would be parallel all the way out and a lamb's foot would get narrower towards the point. So it's a ram's foot, which is a good... Um, blade that you might use for 
If you were cutting through a bit of cable, I just reach off camera here. I'm not going to cut through this bit of cable because these um, Apple cables are horrendously expensive. They know how to charge. Charge like a wounded buffalo. Um, you can put the knife on like that, hit the back of the blade with a mallet or a piece of wood and it chops through the cable. That's certainly the way one would have used a chunky thing like this. And this has a good broad blade which will let you do that. Now, what makes an electrician's knife? Well, um, it's it has not just the um, the cutting blade, but it also has, I just have to take this off camera, a working tool blade. And that, in this case, means it's got a screwdriver, it has a wire stripping edge, and just above the ricasso there, where my little finger is, there's a, a curved part cut out, scalloped part, which is used for stripping wire. So, um, one of the things that, you know, people always bleat on about uh, uh, slip joint knives will fold on you. In the main, if you use them properly and you, you know, I did my Boy Scouts knife and axe years ago and they told you about how to use a knife before they would let you carry a knife. You know, you had to effectively pass a little exam. Your um, patrol leader or one of the leaders had to sit down and you had to demonstrate that you knew what you were doing with one of these things before you were allowed to carry one. Then you could carry one. But one of the things people are always worry about is that they will fold and actually if you're using that screwdriver and you're trying to get some decent torque on it there is a risk that that will fold now normally if it was just a screwdriver blade that wouldn't matter but this edge here is sharp and if you sharpen it up a lot and you're t -t 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 -t, there is a danger you can cut your finger so what this one has is a uh, a lock on it a liner lock Probably makes it illegal to carry in the UK, although if you were an electrician and you were carrying it in your pocket, you'd probably be fine. But it has this brass um, liner lock, which you press in, then you can fold the blade and down it goes. So anyway, if you want to know about electric mate, mate knives, and particularly these unusual Barlow ones, uh, Tobias, before he sent me this off, filmed a video of his three Barlow pattern of these knives and if you look up his channel Knife Chats with Tobias um, you will uh, you, you can see that now what else was in the package well you would think that's enough wouldn't you but Tobias also collects playing cards so he sent me a pack of playing cards and he also collects whistles so in addition to the whistle that's on there he also included uh, two other whistles one of which is a Topps Knives, Topps Knives whistle. And the other one is around here somewhere and I can't see what I've done with it. Um, anyway, another one, similar similar pattern. But anyway, uh, this package all arrived quite out of the blue. Well, I, I, he told me he was sending me the, um, the, the dog bone jack, but what else was in it was quite out of the blue and it really made my week. So that was fantastic. So I would like to say, Big thank you to Tobias for doing that. There was absolutely no need. Um, I just saw something and I thought it was something that he would appreciate more than anyone else. So it seemed the most appropriate place in the world for it to go. So I'd sent it to him. There was absolutely no need to do this, but that doesn't mean I'm not eternally grateful. So thank you very much, Tobias. Thank you to the rest of you for listening to me wittering on for a quarter of an hour. Um, my videos seem to be getting longer. I'll try, and, I'll try not to uh, overdo that. If you like what you see, please feel free to like and subscribe, ring the bell, and you never know, you might see something remotely interesting that will come up shortly. There's going to be something more on Sheffield knives. Um, a couple of things, actually. One to do with the fact that I've picked up a couple of Michael May knives, and then there's something else to do with Taylor's Eyewitness that's coming along in the next little while there's something modern if that's more your bent coming as well and um but that's all for just now thank you very much bye